Hi, today I'm remaking my presentation on home defense guns because based on the commentary I realized there were some points that I had failed to make clear. A lot of people had a lot of misunderstandings, most of which were my fault. So bear with me if I cover material I previously covered. Bear with me if I repeat myself, if I repeat myself, because there's some points I want to make sure I make clear. Home defense guns come with a litany of criteria to consider. Things like, do you live by yourself, or are there multiple people in the home that may need to use this gun, and is it the right gun for everyone? Things like, is your gun stored in such a way that it's readily available to you, but not accessible to little children? Concerns with overpenetration, the list goes on at Astra. And things like this are of paramount importance to some people, while they don't even apply to other people. That's why when someone asks me what is the best home defense gun, I have to give the party line answer if there is no best gun, there's just what works best for you. Well, the inexorable follow-up question is people ask, what kind of guns do I keep in my houses for home defense? Fair enough. So let me show you my top five, and remember these are not recommendations, they're just what works best for me. First on my list is a plain old double action revolver. Easy to store, very simple to operate, all you got to do is pull the trigger, they can be very effective. My personal choice is the Smith & Wesson Model 29, 44 Magnum. There are a lot of criticisms of handguns like this. One of the biggest ones being that because it's so powerful it has a great potential for overpenetration and danger to innocent bystanders. That can be a very valid concern, but in my particular case it really just doesn't apply. Another criticism of handguns like this is because they're so powerful and they have a lot of recoil that they'll really slow you down for subsequent shots. Well, let's shoot it. Seems okay to me. One of the other criticisms is that revolvers don't hold enough rounds. Most revolvers hold five or six, this one holds six. And although accurate statistics on how many rounds a citizen fires in a home defense shooting are really hard to get, I think you'll find that most of the time the situation is resolved with less than six rounds. And if it isn't, you can certainly reload. One of the things is, I hear people say that revolvers can't be efficiently reloaded in the dark. Well, the only thing I can say to that is that you might notice that right now I'm reloading this revolver without looking at it and while being distracted by talking to you. And that's with loose ammunition. With a speed loader, it'd be quite a bit easier and a whole lot faster. The idea that revolvers can't be reloaded in the dark is pure fiction. Next on my list is a plain old shotgun. Lots of good ones out there. A lot of people like auto loaders. Even a double barrel can be very useful. I have a video specifically on doubles and their role as a home defense gun. But my preference is a pump. Let me show you two really good ones. This is a Remington 870, and this is a Mossberg 500. And any of the many versions of 870 or 500 or 590 or anyone in that series are probably the most popular choices for personal protection purposes. And with good reason, they're both really good guns. Shotguns at close range can be very effective. And if loaded properly with a small buckshot like number four or a large birdshot like number two or BBs, they can retain that close range effectiveness while greatly reducing their potential for overpenetration. Now when we're talking about pump shotguns as a home defense gun, there's two topics that always come up that I have to cover. And fair warning, we'll get back to shooting in a few minutes, but for right now this is the boring part of the video where I talk. The first thing is what's called the rack the slide deterrent. Now what that means is that when you see someone about to do something violent, you rack the slide and put a round in the chamber of your shotgun, and that acts as a warning and will dissuade them from doing whatever violent thing they were going to do. Okay. That always comes up when we're talking about shotguns, but that is not the sole bailiwick of the pump shotgun. You can do it with lots of different guns. You can do it with a lever action rifle. Halt! You can do it with an auto loading pistol. Halt! You can do it with an auto-loading rifle. Halt! The thing is, when you do that, that rack the slide deterrent rarely works. Anybody who's been around this business very much will probably tell you the exact same thing I'm saying. In fact, believe it or not, in real life I had to do that once and it did not dissuade anyone and I ended up having to kill somebody. Just my life experience, take it for what it's worth. 
but I get similar reports from other people. The rack the slide deterrent rarely is effective. The second thing is the age-old debate of whether or not to store your home defense pump shotgun with a loaded chamber or an empty chamber. There's a lot of people in both camps and they have lots of reasons to support why they are adamantly one way or the other. I could probably go on for an hour about just this one topic, but I'll try to keep it short. And I'll just cover what I consider to be the top two or three reasons on each side. As far as reasons to have around in the chamber, it one will give you one more shot. This particular 870 has a five shot tube. If you have one in the chamber, you have a sixth. There's also the matter of it allows you to go into action quietly without having to rack the slide. You're not giving away your position or giving away your intent. Both of those things make sense, but I got to say that they are of marginal validity. In a legitimate home defense shooting where the gun in question is a shotgun, usually those shootings are resolved in one or two shots. That's why I say even a double barrel it can be viable. And I have yet to find a case where someone fired over five shots. So when you're starting out with a gun like this Mossberg with a seven shot tube, adding an eighth, I don't think really gives you that much of an advantage. Also, as far as giving away your position, now that makes sense and it is applicable sometimes, but for the most part in a home defense shooting, that just isn't part of what's going on. But the number one reason I would say to have around in the chamber is reliability. I've discussed this before on the topic of auto-loading pistols. What happens is, if you have around in the chamber, then to get this gun to fire, you have to disengage the safety and pull the trigger. When you do that, there is a chance the gun won't go off. You may fail to disengage the safety completely, the round in the chamber may be a dud, whatever. But if you have to add the step of putting a round in the chamber, then there are more things that can go wrong. You have increased exponentially your chances of some kind of mishap, usually one caused by you. The most common one being short stroking the slide. So just as a matter of reliability, having a round in the chamber can be a big plus. Now, the reasons to not have a round in the chamber, there's a few of them, two really big ones. One of those is, when you put a round in the chamber of this shotgun, there is an internal hammer in here that is cocked. And if you're like most people, you leave your pump shotgun sitting there at your house, loaded 24-7 for months on end. Even if you're somebody who takes your gun to the range one day a month, that'd be a lot more than most people do. But even if you do that, you're still letting your gun sit there, cocked, 29 days out of 30. And there are people who will tell you that spring compression doesn't damage anything, but I'm going to tell you that I have seen guns that have incurred damage and that would no longer work reliably due to nothing more than having had their hammer spring compressed for an excessive period of time. And I've got a video where I go on for 20 minutes about just spring compression, so if you've got 20 minutes and nothing better to do, you can watch that. But the short version is, I have actually seen guns incur damage because of that. But the much bigger reason to have an empty chamber is that most pump shotguns, when you put a round in the chamber, they have an internal hammer that is cocked, and they are not designed to be drop safe. Even with the safety engaged, if you hit that gun hard enough or drop it, it can bounce that sear and go off. Now, I'm not going to hit my gun with a mallet enough times to set it off just to prove the point. But if you look on YouTube and look up gun failures, you will see quite a few videos where somebody knocked their gun over and it went off. Some of those videos are fake, but some of them are real. And that, to me, is the biggest reason to store with an empty chamber. But with good reasons on both sides, I can say that the only person who can really decide what's right for you is you. But since we're talking about my favorite guns, how do I store it, and what kind of condition do I keep mine in, and how do I address this problem? Let me show you something. My choice for a pump shotgun is a Winchester Model 1897. And it works pretty well. Now let me give you a close-up view of it. 
Now the way this gun works is it's a pump shotgun with an exposed hammer. While pointed in a safe direction, you put a round in the chamber and your hammer is cocked. And then while still pointed in a safe direction, you lower the hammer to the half cock position for safety. You can see the safety concerns of this. There's been a lot of people that have ventilated their roofs with guns like this. But what this does is now with a round in the chamber and the hammer in half cock, there's no spring tension on the hammer. And because the hammer is forward, it's dropped safe. You're not going to bounce that sear. You'd have to hit this hammer with a hammer to break that internal half cock system and get it to go off. And so it gives me the advantages of a loaded chamber, but none of the disadvantages. Now this is not a gun for everyone. It has a couple of safety concerns. One with the hammer we already saw. Also, when you work the slide on this gun, what happens is the bolt comes straight back and if your hand is not in the right position, you can shear the skin off the top of your thumb. But what I really like about this gun is, because of the way it looks and what it is, if I had to use it, I just look like an old geezer with a gun in his closet. As where if you use a more modern gun like this, especially if you start tricking it out with the pistol grip forestock and the side saddle cartridge loops and the bayonet lug and the laser sight and all that other stuff, now a flashlight on a gun can be a good idea, but when you start putting all those other things, especially when this gun has the word tactical stamped right in it, it can get you looked at with a jaundiced eye in a police investigation. Now you've seen my big handgun, but sometimes you need a small handgun that you can put in a pocket or in your belt and go to the door and not be so obtrusive. Well, what fits the bill for me is the Car Arms PM40. Now, this is not an endorsement of car arms. Some people love them. I have not had very good luck with them. But this one, and I don't mean this model, I mean this particular gun, has worked out really well for me. And it's got two big things going for it. One, it's a small gun, but it's still a caliber 40 Smith & Wesson, so it's fairly powerful. And two, it has the tritium illuminated sights, a real plus if you have to shoot in the dark. When you buy it, it comes with two magazines. I've got a five-shot magazine in it, but it also comes with a six-shot mag that has a foot on it, so you can get a little bit better grip on it. So let's shoot this thing. And being an autoloader, you can keep an extra magazine in your pocket really easily. Not bad at all. Let me show you another small gun I really like, the Smith & Wesson Model 638. It's a five-shot double-action revolver in caliber 38 Special. It's got a couple of features I really like. One of them is the shrouded hammer. Now, there's a lot of good hammerless revolvers out there, but I like the shrouded hammer because occasionally I like the option of being able to cock the hammer. And being shrouded means I can get it in and out of my pocket without it catching on anything. Let's shoot it. Not bad at all. Now it is just a five shot revolver, but there are speed loaders available for it. Now let me show you the other thing I really like about this gun. Another thing I really like about this gun is because it's an air weight, it's very light, I can put it in the pocket of my PT shorts and it won't weigh them down. Also because it's a revolver with a shrouded hammer, if things get too dicey I can shoot from my pocket. Now everybody make your snub nose jokes. Ha 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 ha. Okay, let me show you another gun. I've got one more gun I want to show you. Now we've seen some handguns and we've seen some shotguns, but what about a rifle? Generally speaking, a rifle isn't really a good first choice for a home defense gun, but some people want that option. Problem is when I say rifle, people start thinking of an AR-15 or M16 platform or an AK platform in caliber 762 by 39. And although rifles like that can be very effective, I heard someone say, uh, the AK-47, when you absolutely, positively got to kill every last m person in the room. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. But 7.62x39 has a well-deserved reputation for over-penetration. And AR-15 platform rifles, which are usually in caliber 5.56 NATO, can have very long maximum effective ranges. Uh, the A2 has a maximum effective range by textbook of 550 meters on a point target which is probably a little more than what you need for a home defense gun. So what gun would I select that would have a short enough overall length to be usable in a house, powerful enough to get the job done, but not quite such a tendency toward 
drastic long range or over penetration like the 762 by 39 has. Well, what works for me is the Beretta CX-4 Storm Rifle in caliber 9mm. Now a lot of people might think 9mm is an insufficient caliber, and you might have a point. But remember, out of a rifle barrel it'll have a little more ump than out of the pistol. And this rifle also comes in caliber 40 Smith & Wesson and 45 ACP. Now I selected this one because it uses the same magazines as the Beretta 92FS pistol, which I already had, so this rifle made a logical choice. This also has the features of, it has the rail system so you can add all those doodads that I really don't care for, and you can arrange it to where the charging handle is on the left or the right, and you can make it eject out the right or the left. I've got mine set up to eject on the right with the charging handle on the left. So let's shoot this thing. There's a lot of variations, but your typical 92FS magazine is a 15-shot magazine, which may not seem like a lot, but for home defense purposes it should be plenty. Not bad at all. Short carbines like this can be brought into action very quickly. Not bad at all. But there's people that have the tendency to think that rifles like this can be fired from the hip or some kind of assault position and that'll be highly effective. Let's put that to the test. Well, that might look cool, but it really wasn't any faster and certainly not any more accurate than just aiming was. Well, there's my top five, and remember those are not recommendations, they're just what works best for me. But in addition to home defense guns, I want to cover one other point, and that's a home defense plan. Now, in the military, in creating a defense plan, we had an acronym, COCO, key terrain features, observation in fields of fire, cover and concealment, obstacles, avenues of approach. And you apply those same principles to your home defense plan, although certainly not in quite the same way. And in doing that, I would tell you, you have to prepare for those scenarios that are more likely before those that are least likely. Now, there's some guy on YouTube, and he's got a lot of home defense videos, and he says, you will almost always be invaded in a home invasion robbery between two and five people storming your home with quick and overwhelming force. That's fact one. Is it? Now, maybe he's speaking specifically about home invasion robberies while I'm speaking generically about instances in which you'd use your home defense gun. But I find that to be rather less likely than the scenario of a burglar enters your house when he thinks you're not there, and then instead of running when he discovers your home, he does something violent to you. I'd consider that far more likely. One day I was talking on the phone to one of my crew, who is a retired police officer, and my front doorbell rings. And he asks, do I need to get that? And I tell him, no, I look through the window, if it's not somebody I know, I don't answer the door. And he says, well, get ready to have the back door kicked in. Because he's dealt with that scenario many, many times. A burglar comes to the front door, knocks on the door, determines you're not home, goes around back, kicks the door in, steals your stuff. I find those scenarios to be far more likely. And not only those, but ladies, that creepy ex-boyfriend of yours that has declared that if he can't have you, no one can. Him coming over to your house and doing something violent to you, or whatever other pervo or rapist or the list goes on. I find those things to be far more plausible than between two and five people storming your home with quick and overwhelming force. And while I'm talking about preparing for more likely before less likely, I see people buy $800 handguns and then they'll go out and buy $40 boxes of ammunition. But I can't get them to spring for the $5 it would take to buy batteries and make sure their smoke detectors work. You must prepare for the things that are more likely. Are your household cleansers and poisons out of the reach of little children? Now, I don't want to belabor this point, but my brother is a deputy sheriff and has been for over 25 years. And in that time, he has never shot at anyone, nor been shot at. But he did have a kitchen fire and saved the day with a home fire extinguisher just like this that he paid 25 bucks for. Those scenarios that are more likely before those that are least likely. Now there's one other home security device I want to show you. 
There's one more thing I want to show you for home defense, and that's a dog. Now, she's a Newfoundland, and he's an Irish wolfhound, and in reality, she's about as mean as a marshmallow, and he's about as tough as tapioca, but that's not really the point. The main thing is, people who would come into your home uninvited usually don't like dogs of any kind, let alone a dog this size. And the main thing a dog can do for you is bark. A wiener dog can do that. I just happen to like these particular breeds. So, as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional. And thanks for watching my top five guns for home defense video.